Welcome back to The Shed. It's been a while since we've been here. Uh, been a couple of little amendments. I now have new lights and I have heating, which is gonna make it a whole lot easier to work in this shed over the winter. But today we're making the next stage in the project that I keep talking about and probably should just stop talking about until it's done but we're gonna be making a coffee sack micarta. I don't think we can officially call it micarta because I think micarta is a brand name, but essentially uh, a fabric epoxy composite. Um, I've actually made one already. So this is my first attempt and I did do a time-lapse of making this. and then realized that essentially because it was my first try, I didn't get particularly great shots. It wasn't fantastic. Um, and I wanted to try actually doing it properly. My issue with this, I don't know whether this will pick up on the camera, but essentially it's 10 mil thick at this end and it's about eight mil thick at this end because I just didn't get it completely flat. So that's my goal for doing this second one is to try and actually get that right and get it completely level. But essentially it's reclaimed coffee sack and an epoxy resin combined together to be able to create a really nice solid material for a handle that will go on this project that will all make sense as everything goes ahead. So, um, coffee sack, I've cut up some already, but actually I need to do some more cutting. Um, I made a template that will be the size for two handle scales, uh, so I need to cut it in half. And then, yeah, so this was a coffee sack I got from Chimney, coffee roastery in Surrey. Um, they had a really nice deal where essentially when you buy, just got right up by those, they are very keen on their whole reduce, reuse, recycle. And so when they get coffee sacks in, they don't just want to throw them away. So basically when you order from them, you can ask for a coffee sack to be included with your order, which I thought was really good. So I got this and this is what we're going to use. So thank you very much, Chimney Coffee Roasters. Also very good coffee, like really nice coffee. Um, but yeah, let's get to cutting this up and then we'll talk you through the processes. So what I really like about this bag is actually, so this section doesn't have the printing on it, but some of it does. Uh, you can see that actually in the original came through really nicely, the printing actually comes through, which I quite like. Um, so I will be trying to make sure that all the printing is facing the same direction so it might come through. What is slightly odd, you can actually see it clearly the dye they've used for the printing was picked up in the epoxy and so it's dyed the epoxy green which um yeah wasn't expecting that so last time i cut two of these strips so these are just strips i've cut off one side of the bag and i think i'd like to do another strip just to make sure but I've definitely got a thick enough piece, particularly where it's sort of squashed down to eight mil on one end. So I'm gonna cut another strip. So I've got three strips. That was one of my last knives that I made. I didn't make a video on that one. Though I really quite like the handle detail. I was quite pleased with that. Um, and then I was also practicing making sheaths. I might do a video on that at some point. So we've got all our jute cut up, roughly speaking the same size. To be honest, it's not 100% perfectly the same size, but I think it should work out absolutely fine. I tend to try and get rid of some of these loose straggly bits, just because it makes it easier when it comes to actually getting everything sorted. So obviously, once we then fill that with epoxy and flatten it down, that will get good and flat. 
One of the things that I saw when I've been looking at other people doing this is they're having problems with it sticking to everything that they wrap it in. This paper, when I did that one, it just peeled off so beautifully, I'm gonna use it again. And what I'm gonna do is essentially wrap it, now I'm gonna vacuum seal it. So I have a vacuum sealer, which I'll get out and set up. Um, and in terms of the epoxy that I'm using, I'm using epoxy hard. Got this from probably the internet, either Amazon or it may have been GFS knife supplies, I'm not sure, uh, but it works really well. So it's a 47 to 100 part mix. It's got a pretty decent working time, but I'm not quite ready to get that sorted out yet. So I'll do that in a few moments. And then what I would say as well, I know I've just been cutting everything on this surface, but protect your surface from the epoxy because that becomes a bit of a nuisance later on. This is a super useful mat. This is apparently a dog feeding mat uh, that I got off Amazon Basics. Really good as a work surface saver. You can see how much epoxy there would have been on the surface if I hadn't used this. And then the other trick that I learned was using a paint roller tray as your receptacle. So, we've got all our Hessian jute cut up, got our receptacle, gonna mix our epoxy in just a moment, got our greaseproof paper bag. The working time is decent, but just Think this through in your head, get planned ahead. I didn't do that so much last time, so I was kind of grabbing things that I wasn't quite ready for at any given time. And yeah, it sort of was a bit of a nuisance. I didn't really think it through as carefully as I should have done. Um, but yeah, just plan ahead. And gloves. Gloves are a very good thing, because epoxy in your hand is just, it's not hard to clean off, but it just isn't super easy to get nice and clean properly. So this is my vacuum unit. I got it off Amazon. I think it was about 30 pounds. It's not a super duper fancy unit by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I got it originally for making bacon, but it worked really well for this. So I was really happy with that. So first thing we do is make a bag. And I think we probably want about that much. Let's make this up. I'm gonna make up a decent amount. Last time I didn't make quite enough. I ended up having to add to it. So I'm gonna do 300 milligrams of the resin and three times 47 of the hardener. Exactly 300. What's three times 47? 150 minus 941. And then we get to mixing. So you want to really thoroughly mix everything so that there are no streaks. This would be ideally done, I guess in a vacuum chamber actually, because we're then gonna be mixing air into it as we use the resin, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. But you can see as you mix it, it goes streaky initially. And then as you continue to mix, it gets clearer again. So then we simply start coating every piece of this material in epoxy, laying it down, flattening it out, and making sure anything with printing is facing up. Perfect, so we've got all our pieces mixed up, mixed up, laid out. Just try and give them a good sugar, get them all closely married together. And then we want to wrap it up in a little epoxy parcel.
Done with this, we can just leave that elsewhere for the moment. Have a bit of a tidy up, get rid of any excess epoxy that might be on your surfaces, like that. And then we just need to put an epoxy parcel into our vacuum bag. Now, we want to try and get all the air out of this. It's gonna be virtually impossible to get all the air out of this, but we can get as much as possible. What I decided to try last time was actually just giving it a bit of a flatten as well, because what I don't want is it all to change shape as we vacuum it. So, flat bit of wood, just to give it a bit of extra support. And then we press back seal. There you go. You can see that's sealed really quite nicely. So there we have our vacuum sealed parcel. Now what I would say, I can feel this is still quite squidgy. There is a lot of epoxy in there and we want less epoxy and more material. So, this is where I want to try and fix what I did wrong last time. So I'm gonna be using some clamps. So what I did last time that I did wrong was I think I put too much force towards the back of it. So I'm just trying to look and get this lined up to make sure it should be coming down a bit. Now, you could make a clever jig for all of this so it spreads the force evenly across the whole thing. And if you're gonna be doing this regularly, that's probably a really good plan. And then essentially, we just start screwing that down. And what you should start to see is some epoxy starting to pull in here. And then we just leave that to set for eight hours. Right, so slightly more than eight hours. It's now dark, next day, next evening. And we're ready to undo this. Oh, it's cold tonight. It's one of the coldest nights so far. It's a bit chilly out here. So that was our excess that peeled off. This is where, in theory, the greaseproof paper should make a big difference. It's like one of those ice lollipop things. That doesn't look like a nice flavor. There's the end of the paper. Actually peels off really easily. It's just that some of this excess has then got on the outside of it, which is the only thing that's causing it to tear. It's not sticking at all. So that's a whole lot flatter. I managed to do better with keeping that one flatter this time, which was my main reason for redoing it. That should all clean up really nicely. So yeah, interestingly, annoyingly, you can see on there where I didn't clear a couple of the little excess threads. So that side definitely is looking better than that side at the moment, but chances are that will get cleaned up significantly when I make anything with it. So actually that won't matter a bit. Yeah. Oh, it's cold in here. There we go. So I've got two bits of, so I should be able to get a few handles out of that. Right, it's too cold in here at the moment. I shall cut all of this up when it's slightly warmer in here. Oh, it's too cold. 
Yeah, I'll just give that a bit of a polish. I'll cut the ends off. See how it's looking. Yeah, you can see that's happy with that. Right, so that's everything done. It's now a bit warmer in here. It's actually daytime now and the heater's actually working. It just, it's just a small heater, it takes a little while to heat up, but all sorted. Got them kind of trimmed up, shaped up. I think they're looking absolutely fantastic. I'm really looking forward to making something with these actually. This one definitely significantly thinner than this one, but I'm always a bit uncertain. I often end up using thicker knife scales and then having to grind a lot away. So maybe this will be more helpful, but as the project carries on, I'll let you know. Um, looking at them, actually, I think I've done surprisingly well without getting too many inclusions, air bubbles, anything like that. But obviously time will tell as I come to grind it up and shape it up completely. But let me know if you have a go. So please have a go, try it. Let me know how it gets on. Otherwise, if you like the video, please like it. If you'd like to subscribe and see more and keep up with this project, then please do. And otherwise, thank you very much. Bye-bye.